tonight we have an awesome VIP with us and I hope you're really excited. Colin Huber is an Oregon State 2009 SIGEP graduate. He um, has been leading the social media presence for the NFL for almost four years now. And he is here with us, previously worked at Oregon State, and then he is here with us to share his experience, as well as do a big Q&A, like always with you guys, answer all things social media. And so Colin, I will turn it over to you. And um, gang, as always, put questions in the chat have questions ready to go because we want to answer as many as possible. All right. Take it away, Colin. All righty. Um, let me get my screen all squared away here. Share these slides if I can find it. There we go. Can I get some thumbs up that you can see this? Nice. Love it. Okay. So I'm so pumped to be here um, with all of you. I, uh, I'm always like happy to give back to the fraternity that gave so much to me. So I appreciate um, them reaching out to me and talking and letting me talk to you guys a little bit. I do presentations a little bit differently. I'm not a big words person. So this is probably the most you're going to see on a slide of this deck. Um, so we'll just go with pictures and I'll tell a few stories for about 15 minutes and then we can jump into a Q and A. Uh, I want to cover a little bit about myself, how I came to where I am now. Um, we'll go over the history of social media. Uh, I'll teach you a little bit about how to be good at social. I'm assuming some of you are involved in that with, uh, with your chapters. Um, so I hopefully can give you some tips to either get you started or keep you going. Um, and then of course, answer some questions. So as Heather said, I'm a 2009 Oregon State University graduate, go Beavs. Um, this is the house that I was in. Uh, this house means a lot to me, a lot of memories here. Um, I made lifelong friendships here. I grew as a person. I really found out who I was as a person uh, at this house. I love going back and visiting where I can. Um, it means so much to me. I actually went to school to be a dentist. I am not a dentist now. I'm far from a dentist now. Uh, my degree is general science pre-dentistry, but uh, halfway through my education, I, uh, wanted to make some money and, and joined the, the school newspaper just to write sports and write columns about hot takes and sports. And I was actually good at it and really liked it and realized I was studying the wrong thing. So instead of restarting and having to pay all that money to restart my education, I just finished my degree and used my experience to uh, in, at the paper to get my first jobs uh, out of college. And I worked at two small town news, newspapers, one in Hermiston, Oregon, one in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Now, I, I bet none of you have probably heard of those towns. They're no bigger than 25,000 people. Uh, my first job was a general breaking news reporter uh, for the newspaper there. And I was literally going out and covering things like watermelon festivals and riding combines with, with farmers. Um, I learned how to tell stories in a very different way. Um, I didn't stay there too long. I actually moved to Klamath Falls to become a sports reporter, my true passion. And uh, I spent a year there covering high school sports and the college that was there. The good thing about working in sports in small towns is that people actually want to talk to you. It's not like a big city where uh, people are a little bit like apprehensive about the media. In small towns, the parents want you to put their kids in the newspaper. So it was kind of cool to make people's days in that way. Um, so, and then after that, I was, I was, let's say a year through, I got a call from my alma mater at Oregon State to come work uh, at a new, in a new position um, at university marketing. So like not sports marketing, but the general university marketing, and they needed help with their social presence. I had some background in it. I was sort of on the cusp of age of where social was starting to become a big deal for brands. And they brought me in to run that. I took their social accounts, which posted just random links to stories every day to being super engaging, uh, funny, witty, uh, uh, engaging with students, encouraging students to, to engage back with us, um, direct messaging them, uh, reaching out to prospective students, really um, taking social to another level, which I believe is the power of it. And that's, um, you know, personally reaching out to people from a brand account. But after five years, I was like, oh, I miss sports. Uh, I want to do something different. So I actually applied for the NFL 
uh, a position in social there. I didn't know anybody in the NFL. I knew I wanted to go bigger and try something bigger. Uh, I got lucky. They pulled my resume. I interviewed well, and 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 that's where I am now. Uh, and this is actually me in a picture, not Jimmy Garoppolo. I wish I looked like Jimmy Garoppolo. I wish I had his bankroll. But if we zoom in here, that's me behind him um, with the cell phone. If we have another example here, here's Julio Jones, all pro wide receiver. That's not me either. I wish I had his athletic build. But if we zoom in, there I am on the sideline in blur, make sure, make, making sure I capture that touchdown dance. Um, so this is the big epic part of my job. This is like what gives me the most joy, getting to go to Super Bowls and sit on sidelines for games. I really lucked out there. I'm super grateful for it. But there's a ton of work that goes into this, this position. And it happens on the back end in front of a computer screen um, and, and, and behind a phone. Um, I manage strategy and post on the main NFL handle for all of our social accounts or all of our social platforms. In addition, I, I, I touch, I have my hands in things, uh, SR, our ancillary accounts like NFL Throwback, which was dedicated to the history of our game or the Checkdown, which some of you may have heard of is kind of a cross between football and pop culture. We have NFL Network, which is our media wing and our broadcast channel, and then Inspire Change, which is one of our newest set of accounts dedicated to social justice and amplifying player voices in that space. So enough about me. Let's go back a little bit in history of social media, um, particularly in 2004. When I got into school in 2005, Facebook had just started. And I don't know, I'm sort of aging myself here, but Facebook started as a, a, a .edu only uh, registered account. So you had to have a .edu uh, address or email address to actually get in and get an account. And I, I think that was like the golden age of social where the feed was chronological. Your mom wasn't on there. Your dad wasn't on there. There were no brands. People weren't advertising to you. It was just your peers uh, on Facebook. But that has changed a lot. Obviously, this timeline shows so many different social platforms that have popped up. We have some like Google Plus and Vine and Meerkat that were there for a while and then they failed. But others like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, which is like new on the scene, I think is gonna stay around for a long time, um, are sort of the mainstays and sort of the power players in social. So where are we now? Well, all, all communication that we do happens in the palm of our hands now, whether it's texting or phone, phone calls, which I, I think phone calls have like made their way out of our society for good or for, uh, for bad, but um, social media has taken over. Um, we can communicate with people that way. Uh, we can share who we are that way. Um, and it all surrounds, all surrounded by what I call the algorithm. So if we can dive a little bit deeper into social strategy right now. Um, the al algorithm didn't exist five or 10 years ago. My job didn't even exist 10 years ago. Uh, but this algorithm um, has taken chronologically, chronological order out of our feeds and is, um, allowed accounts to or allowed social platforms to serve you content that you will relate to or that you will engage with. And while we go through about our days scrolling and, and double tapping photos and liking things and commenting, these companies are keeping track of that. So if you're somebody who loves football and you spend a lot of your day um, engaging with football posts, that those platforms are gonna serve you more football posts. So our job, my job as a social, a per, social person for a brand is to try to gain that al algorithm. How do we, and how do you as chapter leaders and communicators um, use the algorithm of social media to spread your brand positively? Well, first you have to commit to social and this is like the hardest part of it. I think um, back in the day, people would tell me, oh, it must be nice to, to tweet all day and to post on Instagram all day. It is nice, I love my job but it's extremely difficult. Um, it takes full-time heads and full-time people to actually pull that off and to have a strategy and to have a consistent um, post cadence. So the first thing you have to do, and I encourage you all, you have to just commit to social, put it at the forefront of what you do. Um, and then you make a, then you make a goal. Um, are you trying to recruit? Are you trying to reach out to current students, chapter communications, alumni relations, or is it a little bit of everything? And if it's a little bit of everything, Try to prioritize one over all of them so that you can form your content based on reaching that audience. Now, 
I talked about this a little bit, but we want to put social front and center. I truly believe that it is the most organic way to reaching your audience, whether it's in recruitment or whatever the things we talked about. Um, and I use the SIGA page as an example. I would love to see icons for social on the top of this page. So when people visit the site, they can go to our social accounts and see exactly who we are as a group. You can see personalities, how we talk about different posts, the things that we post. Um, I think it's super important. Um, getting a little more into the weeds of creating content for social. Um, each platform has, I guess, guidelines for how to package content. So for Instagram, as an example, we want to make sure our posts are square. We don't want to put wide content on Instagram or even make it four by five vertical. Um, these are the algorithm is all about getting people's attention quickly. And if we can take up more screen real estate by doing that with our videos and photos, the more engagement we're going to get. Uh, you also have to think about Instagram as how people consume it. Do people watch long form three plus minute videos on Instagram? Not really. Um, so maybe there's a better place for that. Maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Twitter, although Twitter sort of sits in between as far as how much attention you can get out of people. Uh, the next one, the next tip is uh, engagement. How can you find one-on-one -on -one interactions with your audience? Um, and a lot of that has to do with what I call social listening. And a good example of this sort of in your, in your terms um, would be if like a college student is tweet or an incoming college student is tweeting about um, joining Greek life at, at your university. If you found that post, you could use your brand account or your chapter account um, to engage with that person in a obviously in a positive tactful manner that sort of gets the gets you on their radar so that when they are being recruited they will remember that one time that that the um you know the fraternity account uh, messaged them or talked to them and i think it does make a difference in the recruitment process also one note on this keep your direct messages messages open anybody that has questions for your house let them do that privately and respond to them promptly that customer service is a big part of social media. And then follow the numbers. Um, as you're posting more, see what performs best. So like count, count your likes, keep a, keep a, like a Google sheet or, or an Excel sheet of like of posts that are doing well. Um, take into account reach impressions, number of likes. And then once you have those and you see your top performing posts, post more just like it. And this example here, um, posts that do well for us are news, breaking news. And then um, custom illustrations are our number one post actually of all time is that um, that top left uh, illustration of Tom Brady uh, after his last Super Bowl. And then timing matters. Um, I use this example from our checkdown account. Uh, last week, Juju Smith-Schuster, a wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, re-signed with the Steelers. And our checkdown team had the wherewithal to think about, okay, if he re-signs, how are we going to capitalize on this engagement? So they came up with this, this uh, illustration um, and pushed it out right when the news broke. And because there was this sort of this hurricane of, of media onslaught, it got, it got in the mix and um, got an incredible engagement. So as it pertains to what you do, are there sporting events? Are there events that you're throwing that you can sort of get your account in the mix on and talking about so that you're capitalizing on these big moments in time? And then I would encourage you all to create a personality on your account. So that can be done in a couple ways. Number one, in your copy, how you caption um, videos and photos. Are you, are you trying to be funny? Are you trying to be witty, um, serious, educational? You want to try to keep the same tone as what your chapter embodies. And then use the people in the faces to promote who you are. I think something like a day in the life or um, even like selfie video of somebody going to class or somebody hanging out in the fraternity is such a huge window, an important window into life uh, as a SIG EP um, that I think social can really lend itself like a, a takeover style thing to, um, you know, to, to spreading who you are. And then lastly, to wrap this up, if you have budgets, I know not everybody has a social budget or a marketing budget or any sort of budget, but if you have it, put some of it toward, um, toward, toward social. And this is like a kind of scary part of social, but when you're spending money on ads and placing ads, you can get extremely granular. You can target people by where they live. You can target them by their age, the things they're interested in. 
And when you encompass all those things together, you can reach the exact specific audience you want to see. And I think that's, an, you're, you want to see your best content. And I think that's super important, especially in the recruitment process. So I'll stop there. I realize I ripped through that. Um, that's my at, if you wanna follow me on social, reach out to me on questions with questions privately. Um, I'm so thankful I got to do this with you. I hope you got something out of it and um, I'm happy to open this up for questions now. All right, guys, feel free to put questions in the chat. Um, if you want, you can raise your hand and we can come to you too um, and take you off mute, mute and we'll answer as many as we can. Um, Colin, do you want to unshare your screen? And so that way we can see yeah. more of your face. All right. There okay. So um, off the bat, I'll get us started. And then guys, if you just want to keep putting questions in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them. Um, you mentioned ads there at the end. If you were in their role right now, so if you were your chapter's VP comm, um, what, how would you use ads and what would your strategy be related to recruitment? Yeah, I, I would 100% focus on recruitment and, and then I would target um, people by location. So I would go into whatever town or city your university is and I would I would set a perimeter. It's amazing what you can do inside the tool of advertising, but you can set a perimeter, like a gate of who you want to target, and then, and then within that, I would I would target interests. So if someone is interested in Greek life, um, the algorithm can pull if they've ever engaged with um, a Greek house. Um, people interested in academics or uh, sports. So those sort of like balanced man things we always talk about, you can target those interests and then serve whatever content you choose to them. Now, what would that content be? It could be as simple as like a picture of your, your house. If your house is awesome and looks great, you know, that could be something that could, that could be engaging. It could be, um, you know, a custom recruitment video. Um, you know, it's sort of, you sort of have to weigh what works best for your chapter and what, um, what content you can create. Grant from Mizzou asked, what kind of editing services do you use or recommend? Like for, for video grant or photo or? Yeah, I guess either one. Um, you talked about the, like the Tom Brady photo, like what kind of editing went into that? Yeah, so we do most of our stuff in Adobe software. Like we get the whole suite. Um, it, I think that was done with Illustrator. Um, but we work primarily in Photoshop and Pr Premiere Pro for video. So I think if you're someone who's looking to get into that in your career or even just looking to improve your skills in any sort of content, graphical, video editing, I would start there and even pay for like a $10 subscription to Photoshop and teach yourself how to do it. Use YouTube. Alec from Illinois Institute of Technology asked, how useful are hashtags today in the scope of bringing relevant people toward our content? It's a great, it's a great question. And I would say they're not that useful anymore. Um, they used to be, they used to be a place where you could aggregate, oh, things like, like an event. If you had a hashtag for an event, you could aggregate it and encourage people to click the hashtag and, and engage with other people that are talking about you know, said event. Um, I think if you have a regular hashtag or an event that happens every year, I would have one for it so that it, so that even for you and your historical perspective, you could go back and see all the times you posted about it. But as far as people clicking hashtags to just go and look at the content, they don't do that very often anymore. Things like, like Twitter is a great example of this that has a top or a trending topics page and feed. That's where they keyword things outside of hashtags and, and trending topics where people are gonna go. They're not necessarily gonna click on your hashtag. So if you use one, I would say stick to one and no more than that. Uh, Leon from Stetson asked, do you manage all the different platforms or what does that support system or strategy yeah. look like? No, that's a great question. Our social team is probably at its height can be close to 40 people. Um, and that includes that includes like contract work. We, we had to hire a lot of contractors for six months periods during the season. 
Um, but we're about 25 strong right now, just full-time people at the NFL. The NFL does, has done an amazing job committing to social, and I kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, but we have programmers like myself, people in charge of creating strategy and actually putting the posts out. We have designers um, who, to make graphics. We have illustrators who paint for us. We have video editors. And those are all people dedicated to social. And that's extremely rare even today to have full teams like that dedicated to social media. Larry from St. Mary's asked, what makes a social media page really good and what makes one not so great? One that is active is really good. Um, I think that the worst thing you can do is create a page and then have it not be active. Um, I really believe that if somebody goes to your social account and sees you haven't posted in months, I actually think it turns them off your brand. I, I, I think it's super important, number one, to be active. Now, we don't want to just put up garbage, right? Like we don't put up things just because I think there has to be strategy behind it. But if you can start off by committing to once a week or twice a week or once a day, posting something um, can go a long way than posting nothing. Got it. You mentioned engaging one-on-one -on -one with people. What are examples of that that you think could work um, for a chapter to, to build its brand? Um, well, I kind of talked about it a little bit with recruitment. I, let me try and think of a specific example. Hmm. I think it just comes down to listening. It all depends on what, what your goal is. Again, if you have somebody talking about SIGAP nationally or um, even somebody who's just excited to go to college next year, um, those are conversations I would want to be in and say something like, hey, are you looking, or we have a great Greek system here. If you're looking, if you're looking at that at all, take a look at SIGAP. Here's what we believe in and maybe link them to something. Um, I think there's also weight in having open-ended discussions where maybe you ask a question and you have a day where it's like, prospective students, um, we're answering your questions and let them let them pepper you with questions and answer them. Does that, does that answer? Mm -hmm. Are there ways like using polls or like specific tools within the channels that you'd recommend? Yeah, it kind of depends on what you're doing. Polls are great for like on Twitter. Um, Instagram story has polls. You can that's, that's almost a little bit better because, well, Twitter's also anonymous, but Instagram story allows people to tap through and vote on something anonymously. Um, so there, there's a good, there's something to be said about being able to test people and get results, uh, use case results off of polls. Love that. Um, any advice for getting chapter members engaged in content creation? Mm. Um, tell them that it's awesome. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I think number one, you have to really drive home how important it is to a, have a social presence and then market yourselves. Um, I think that if you have personalities that in, within your chapter that you think would be great to align your brand with, I think those are people that can use their voices and image to um, drive what drive what your goal is and what your messaging is. That's a great tip. Um, Lewis at Drake asked, have you used LinkedIn for fostering creating or creating alumni connections? That may speak toward your experience at Oregon State a little bit. Yeah, we used LinkedIn at Oregon State um, quite a bit. That, that was, um, our foundation actually used it the most to identify possible donors. Um, but I think as far as a place, to me, LinkedIn is in this weird box where I feel like they're only there for career building. So if somebody is, is maybe not in the mood or not in, in the part of their career to advance themselves or like change jobs, I don't see LinkedIn as being that great at engaging people. Um, however, alumni, if they show, showed connection to your chapter on LinkedIn, you should absolutely be serving them and 
treating that platform as a place to serve content to alumni. And I would cut it off right there. Got it. Uh, Jason from Sam Houston State asked, how can I make myself stand out when applying for a job in this field? Hmm. Um, I would probably learn as much as you can. Number one, I would try to be a really good copywriter. So in any phase of marketing, even down to like just emailing people, the way you speak uh, specifically in like a conversational tone, adding personality to what you say in your copy is super important. I would start there. And then from there, you can branch off, learn things like we talked about Adobe Photoshop, um, even get into educating yourself on how things go viral, right? Like why are memes going viral? Why did this meme go viral? How are people packaging these, packaging these things? And I really want to impress upon that sometimes a good social strategy doesn't mean having the most polished photos or the most produced videos. Sometimes it just has to be um, raw and organic. It has to be like a moment in time that was just recorded on a cell phone video. Some of our best posts come from a random moment after a game between two players exchanging jerseys and it's just on a cell phone. So if you can find those moments and identify them before they happen, I think um, you can separate yourself as far as just speaking strategy and separating yourself as far as what you know about social, what you can bring to the table in marketing. How did you develop your tone? So when you were talking about you took Oregon State from pretty formal to more witty and engaging, how did you develop your tone? Um, and so with the fraternity, it can be really fun and exciting. It can also go over the edge. So how do, how do you balance that? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. You have to, you absolutely have to police yourself a little bit. Um, if you're not good at being witty yet, or if you don't have somebody who's naturally witty or has personality about it, I think it's going to take, take a little bit of practicing. Um, but I always go back to, I don't know if anybody has seen what Wendy's does on Twitter, especially like a year ago, um, they would cross a line a little bit sometimes, but I really believe that you sort of have to take a risk to get the biscuit, right? Like you have to go out of your comfort zone. Um, I wouldn't say anything scandalous or like, you have to be very thoughtful about it, but people like fun. Like social media is as much as it is about education, it's just as much about entertainment. Like we get our phones out to be entertained by social and that can be in content and that can be in copy. So I would just practice. It's a huge yeah. point. Um, Juan from Cleveland State asked, how do you ensure what you create this year? So I'll phrase it this way. Say you have staff turnover or turnover within your team. How do you make sure it stays consistent? So what these guys build, the next person picks up oh. and it's still consistent. It's a really great example. Um, in my world, you sort of have the, you have the luxury of um, vetting people fully based on their careers. And I understand you're probably looking at people who are just starting their like they're just still working on being people, right? Um, so I would I would start the education early. I would make it known that you have what, like a marketing department or you're working on social and I would ask for volunteers and then I would use that, um, those people that volunteer, um, I would educate them on what you're trying to do and why it's important. Um, as far as you know, that keep keeping turnover, I, that's hard. I think if you lose a good personality or somebody who really gets it, that's, that can be tough. But it, I think part of the job has to be teaching the next group how to do it. And I think if you set an example, especially on social, you set a tone or a content strategy, um, it's pretty easy to pick up if you educate them correctly. Guys, that's why it's so important to use your committee and and actually delegate things to them so that they can practice and are ready yeah. when when it's time to step up. Um, what do you think is 
the fraternity's place on TikTok, right? So mm-hmm. TikTok started out when it was, you know, 90% of it dance videos, right? It, like two years ago, it's very different today. Um, what do you think we could use it for in our chapters? Any thoughts there? Yeah, I think um, in addition to dance, TikTok is so <laughs> good at um, showing like behind the scenes, behind the scenes stuff or how to videos. Um, Gosh, it could even be something like, I don't know if people want to see this, but um, how you do work parties or um, how you plan for events, something that's sort of inside. And the great thing about TikTok is you can edit everything right in the platform um, and make it fast paced. I think, I think, especially in your guys' generation, TikTok is probably the most important platform to be on right now. Um, mm. So I would also another part of TikTok is trends and like music, right? So, so many songs have become big hit songs because of TikTok or voiceovers. Um, if you are somebody who, first of all, if you're on TikTok, you should, you should, if you're going to create TikTok, you should actually um, use TikTok and scroll it and be on it every day and understand where the trends are. And then capitalize them. If people are doing prank videos, maybe you do like a prank video with a couple brothers. Like, I feel like that, you know, obviously good taste and good taste, but maybe you do something like that to sort of capture attention. Not everything about social is like educating people. You can just show off your personality that, Hey, we're, we're fun people. We're, we have good values. Like we hang out. We're great friends. Like that stuff's really important, especially in your world. As you said, it's for entertainment. We want people to see our content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sawyer from Drexel asks, how do you know something is cool instead of cringy? (laughs) It's very hard. Believe me, I have put out my fair share of cringy posts. Um, I feel like as I age, it gets worse. So that's why we hire people under us that are younger and understand these things better. But um, you have to try. Like, you're never going to hit it perfect every time. I think as you post, you have to evaluate again the analytics behind it, how to power perform. If something bombs, don't come back to it again, right? Um, but you have to try, and you will find out immediately if you were cringy or if you were, um, or if a post was really good. So I, the answer to that is like you don't really know. I'm sorry, but you you just have to, you just have to try. How do you respond to, if you have uh, a crisis emerge on social media or, um, you know, a concern emerge, like how do you work through that? Um, Well, I think you have to get the right people involved first. So it's always good to have more people in the room when you make decisions. Um, A lot of times, how can I relate this? We've had things in the NFL happen like when COVID hit, right? Um, that was a big, that was a big moment for all of sports. So we've had moments where we've just shut down social posting because that happened or like something tragic happened in the world and you sort of have to read the room and know when to post and when not to post. So first thing I would do is shut it down, evaluate how you want to respond. Now it totally depends on what kind of crisis you're dealing with. If it's something that is caused by you or within your house or your chapter, you have to engage the right people to come out with a response, whether it's a press release, um, it could be something in the form of of an apology. I would never take the social and be defensive about something. You absolutely have to be um, prepared for a possible backlash. Um, So I think it's case by case, but you can always stop posting and step back and take yourselves out of the conversation and evaluate. That's great advice. Um, for, uh, let's see here one sec. Alec has another question. Could campus rivalries be used as a mode to create good uh, personality content? Totally, totally. That is a great one. It's something we did at Oregon State a lot. It's even better if you can have the other chapters um, at the other school on board. Um, and so you can sort of do some pre-planning of how you want to engage with each other on social. And sometimes that 
if you can get them to, you know, if you can work together, sometimes that eliminates the, um, the part of like make, getting defensive or like offending somebody. Because I think sometimes those rivalries between teams or chapters or whatever can get a little extra, right? Can get a little um, too aggressive and sort of hurt feelings. And then it just looks bad on both of them. So I would recommend, I absolutely would try to do that. I would definitely, that is one of those moments of timing where you want to, if there's a rivalry, you want to be engaged in it. But I would try and work it out with the other communications person at the other chapter. Um, we've had we've had teams if you remember like the nba and the nfl we've had teams go after each other before but it's always sometimes it just gets too much and then it becomes like a burn fest right and we just need to be careful about how you just have to be careful about how classy you are and not classy how do you talk about um things that nfl values whether that is philanthropic causes or um you know, community causes or social causes how, how similar to how Saget values things and wants to make a difference in the world how do you work that into your content um it's a it's it's a key part and i'm i wouldn't lie to you all as far as following metrics um posts about community community work or social justice um they're not always top performers but that doesn't mean you don't post about them that doesn't make them less important to who we are as a league um, lifting our player vo player voices up they are fully whether it's somebody um you know working on uh, community or um, law reform or a player out in his community just sh um, shoveling for a, a creating a garden at a city you know and all all those community projects matter and we have a calendar and we work with teams closely to identify those opportunities to either have someone there on the ground with cameras um, or get that content from teams and elevate it on NFL channels. Got it, which is so, so accurate. Just make it part of your, just make it part of your plan. Make it part of your plan. Um, guys, other, any other questions? I think we've knocked out the ones in the chat, but feel free to come off mute and, and ask them yourself. Colin, anything that if you were in their shoes that you would be asking yourself that they haven't said yet? Um, how do I, how do I pass school? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think a lot of this is, I think when we're in college, we think a lot about our careers and how to prepare for them. Um, I would sharpen up on your interview skills. I would sharpen up on um, how you talk to people, um, how you write emails, um, you know, and I think how that, how, what we're talking about today plays into what you do for your chapters. I would, I would just lift up the people that are underneath you. And as the classes come in and as you age and the classes come in underneath you, educate them on what you've learned and how you've, um, succeeded or not succeeded in, in the fraternity. Bring them along with you. I think, I don't know why, I don't know why I'm just talking about this, but I think I remember when I was a freshman and I, the seniors would look at us like, oh God, another generation. They're so different and so weird, but I would really encourage you as you all become seniors to welcome in those freshmen, that freshman class and their personalities and, and teach them what you have learned so that they can be as great as you were. Oh, that's huge. Guys, let's go around um, and if we want to just do takeaways before Colin um, jumps off, what are what are some key takeaways from your last 45 minutes with us? And we'll 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 start there. Feel free to come off mute. What's one thing you're taking away from from our session so far? Go for it. Other questions? No, I, I thought what was great is like thinking of going into like the whole process that you mentioned of, you know, actually look actively looking into what is going on and what blows up because 
Um, I don't think we focus too much about that in our chapter. We kind of just post what we're doing. And so I, I, I don't know, I just kind of never thought about it, like doing, going that far with, you know, the social media part of our chapter. Yeah, I think for me, one thing that was a good reminder was the fact that like, I have a lot of ideas and a lot of goals, but narrowing down and prioritizing things to make sure that we actually get a couple things done well instead of like a bunch of things half-baked, uh, that was a good reminder. So I'm taking that away. Yeah, totally. Quality quality over quantity, although it's very good to, you know, you want an editorial calendar, you want to keep consistently posting, whether it's on your website or social or anywhere, but it has to be great, right? It has to be good. When it actually goes out. Anybody else? One more? Yeah, so one of one of the things I took away from this was following the numbers and just like keeping track of what gets the most attention and just focusing more on that. That was not something I had thought about in, until now. So for the future, I will definitely look into that. Love that. Yeah, it's amazing once you, as you post more, it's amazing what you can learn about how people use social media uh, by what they, how they interact with your posts. It tells a lot about people. Okay. All right, Colin, thank you so much. Um, we appreciated everything tonight. Um, and guys, we'll stick around and just do a couple of more tips and tricks and share with each other. Um, but Colin, thank you so much. And um, if you can put, it, if you can give me your your handle one more time, I'll put it in the chat so that everyone can can follow you and we'll grow your follower base real quick. <laughs> and thank you so much and have a great night. And guys, all right, you guys. Hey, thanks so much. And um, feel free to reach out. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to answer or ask questions on here. But happy to engage with any of you privately. Um, whatever you want. Thanks so much.